Hello and welcome to my latest video. So this time um, I've got this collection of 10 volumes, boxed volumes here, of the uh, Second World War Illustrated, which were published uh, well, at the end of uh, the Second World War in 1945. And they came with these uh, mailer boxes and uh, some need a bit of a clean. So this one's like covered in a bit of a uh, mold and, and dirt and I'm going to need to give that one a clean up. Some of them are fantastic, other ones are going to need a little bit of work and I'm going to have to work my way through all 10 volumes of this. We'll have a really good look at them and, uh, and give them a clean as we go. So sit back, relax and let's get to it. Okay then, so I've put the other uh, nine volumes over there and I've got a uh, well, I guess this is number five because someone's written a number five on it. Now this one isn't too bad because the box is, generally speaking, held its uh, held its corners. It doesn't look like it's been crushed too badly. And once again, on first inspection, there's none of that sort of mottling. So I think what we'll do, I'm 100% sure what the best way to clean these, because some of these boxes are lovely. Other ones are really uh, quite dirty. Now we've got split corners here. And I am tempted just to um, maybe get some brown paint on those, uh, brown tape rather, not brown paint, brown tape, uh, like parcel tape, and put a little L in there and fix all the corners. So I think that's something I will do uh, once I've gone through all the, all the sets completely. I am, however, going to take that 5P off the top because, uh, number five off the top, because I don't want that one to be on there just something that was done in antiquity, as it were, probably when the books turned up. And though it's leaving a bit of a mark, I still think it's worth, worth doing. Being quite light with it because it's obviously by doing this, it's showing the other areas which aren't, aren't exactly so, uh, so clean. But in actual fact, as the boxes go, this isn't a bad one. So just give it a little wipe over with my duster here. And let's get the first book out. So just do the bottom of this. So. Not bad, you can see it's almost like the frame tray of a jigsaw, isn't it? It's not too bad, that. Give it a dust off. Right. So, book number one then, well. As you would expect, there's going to be a little bit of uh, dust, but not so much, not like when we've in the past had to um, clean paperbacks that have been on the shelf. Just a little bit of edge dust sort of on, on all the edges in actual fact. And this might be worth doing on the front here. Yeah, it's um, it's lifting up somewhere like the surface, the surface dust on it. Well, it's actually made quite a big difference. That actually, I'm a bit reluctant, a little bit reluctant to put any sort of chemicals on this, on these boards, because I think they're going to spoil them. So as you see here, there's like a little, a little spot there, a little bit there. I could probably get away with just a little dab of water, but you know, I'm almost, I just think it might cause a little bit more harm than good on what is in actual fact. Um, that's actually a really nice, you know, copy of that book. So what the War Illustrated was, obviously this is 
Volume 5. Um, they did this for the First World War as well. It was like a weekly magazine where they reported on the events of the war and everything that had happened that week. Now, obviously, it's, it was published in the UK. It's quite patriotic, um, but it does create an almost unique record of, uh, of the war and what was going on at that time. And uh, as you can see, it's, uh, but isn't it? each book is, you know, a lot. Oh, it's actually volume one. Look at that. That was good luck, wasn't it? Because um, I have picked these at random. So I don't know where that five had come from. And it mentions here, so it's edited by Sir John Hammerton. And he was editor of the War Illustrated for the First World War, of which um, I've just got a couple of volumes, but I am looking to um, to get a set of those as well. So uh, here they are. And this is what it's like throughout each each issue that's been bound together, omnibus style, is another week of the war. Absolutely fantastic. The detail is just phenomenal, as you can see. And uh, I'm a bit of a World War II buff. I do, do like my military history. Um, and this is why this is such a great, great work. I was actually given these as a present for my birthday. I did sort of point my uh, my wife in the direction. I said, oh, well, we'll mind those. And uh, she actually got them for a very, very good price. Um, so there we are, number one. Lovely. And, you know, when they're on the shelf, they're going to look fantastic. But um, I think what we'll do then... Rather than put them back into their mailer boxes for now, I think I'm going to leave the boxes to one side and we'll have the books to one side as well. And then at the end, we'll take a look at all the books together because I think they'll look fantastic. So this next one then, this is a bit worse for wear because the box is actually, um, it's been damaged in a couple of places here. So it's lost a bit of its shape. But as I said, I think what I'll do, I'll just get some gummed brown paper and I'm going to sort these corners out to get them looking uh, as good as possible. And I think while I'm here, I'm just going to pull the camera out so we get a better angle of it. And I will readjust the camera angles and stuff as we go along. Now, God, this is a big thick one. This is volume 10. So the first one and the last one. So this last one might be a little bit thicker than usual. Uh, now that there has actually, it's actually lost the, the staple. So I did bring a stapler down and I'm just gonna, I think I will just staple this one. Let's see. There we are, it does actually um, do the trick. That just one replacement staple there. But in the instances where there's like a tear like that, that I'm gonna, I need to uh, get the brand gum paper on that. But if it's just like um, a bit which has come unstapled, I shall just use the stapler and uh, fill in that little hole. Because these are only the uh, the mailer boxes, and uh, but they have done their job, haven't they? they? This has been how they would have been originally sent out. And um, they've kept the books on the whole in great condition by the looks of it. So this one here, then number 10. Well, can you see if I get right up close, there's like, it's like a layer of dust or some sort of slight mottling on it, which I'm not sure. I'm hoping, let's do it, it doesn't seem too bad. I'm hoping that my just, you know, my soft shoe brush here is gonna help out and just get this off. So let's have a look. Well, sadly, it's not done that, so. just sort of like storage, you know, 
mold, a little bit of mold, mildew. Although nothing like as bad as you might, you know, it's not like it's got damp, because these haven't. And that's where the, uh, the cardboard mailer boxes have really helped. But as you can see, there's this little, this little area on the top there, which is um, still affecting it. Yeah, I think the slightest dab of light water is just going to lift that surface because it's just like a little bit of surface muck. And when I say light, I mean absolutely minuscule. But hopefully that will do the trick and it shouldn't come back. So just going to pause there and I'm going to get a tiny uh, cloth, which has got a tiniest bit of water inside. So key with this is just to be as minimal as possible which is what I'm doing. And clean these inside edges as well. And it really is only like sort of storagey wear. That's really all it is. There we are, that's, that's not too bad at all. I mean, it's not perfect, but it's gonna be okay, I think. Let's give it a flick through. I think inside these are really, they're really, really great conditions. There's nothing to really worry about internally. So these are particularly good. And I do wonder, I watch a, a great YouTube channel. Um, it's just called World War II. And uh, uh, the channel's run by, they're called uh, Time Ghosts. And uh, they, uh, they're doing the Second World War in real time, similar to how they did the First World War in real time a few years back. And they've been going for about two years now. And I wonder if they, uh, they use this series as a bit of a guide just for key events that, are going, that were going on at that time. Just giving that box of dust off. Number three. Now this is interesting because I believe what happened was that these were sent out in pairs. And uh, this has got the original address on Mr. L. Barton. 6 Hudson Street, Accrington, Lancashire. Paid. Amalgamated Press. Please use this contained label when send your next copies to be bound. Hmm, okay. It's got a big number three on the back, so we'll, we'll get rid of that if I can. So I don't think the boxes are matching up with what's actually in them anyway. So I don't think it's going to matter too much. But it is very unusual to have these in a, a set of mailer boxes, so I do want to keep them. Let's uh, give these edges a wipe. There's also a three on the on the front here. It's, uh, makes much more it's much more obvious because the, the front of this box is just so dirty so you can sort of it almost uh, needs to be blended in with the rest of the box doesn't it it really is very very dirty Like this may have been the one that was stored on the top or something because it's got so much dust on it. Let's uh, get inside. So again, it's oh, that's someone oh, they've actually done. Someone else has put some extra 
cardboard inside to keep these rigid, similar to what I'm going to do with my brown tape. I didn't do a very good job there because that one's come away, but I can, I can re-staple that. Let's see if I can get that one redone while we're here. There we are. Let's look at the, the booking question here. So this is volume three, and it is volume three. This one doesn't seem to have suffered any like mottling, not like some of them. So yeah, it looks pretty good this. So if you are tempted to get this sort of set, I very much recommend buying them in a set rather than an individual and making sure that there's all 10 volumes are in existence you know, together with the set. Uh, when I was researching these, I found that there were sets that were, that came with like a book plate on the first volume, which was signed by the uh, editor. Now, quite nice and fairly common. I saw a few of those. Um, it's like little association copies, you know. Um, This is the early 1940s, says a lot on the Blitz and things like that. Great stuff. Of dust on the inside covers because they're not printed on the best possible po uh, quality paper they're, they're okay but it was like magazine so it's, it's like a step up from newspaper print if you know what I mean it's not like newspaper print but it's the sort of the next best thing what a mess they're making <laughs> right let's have a look at the fourth one that's this one here similar again it was the same same chat mr. Barton here Heavy this one, and uh, got some muck on the box here. Wonder where they were stored. I'm guessing these have, um, you know, been discovered by family members and thought, oh, let's get rid of those. We don't need them. And ah, that's interesting. So this one has specifically got on the back volume nine. So I will remember that. Oh, and this box here says volumes four and five. So we are going to need to marry up the boxes a bit later on. And this is actually volume five, but it's got um, some mottle in there, which we're going to need to take a look at. Box wise, once again, yes, yeah, it's, it's pretty dusty and dirty. We're just going to need to pair those up later. So there's actually two box lids, so I'm not going to match that with anything yet. Now, let's see what we can do with this cover, because it does... Ah, that's good. A lot of it's coming off just with a quick rub of the, the, the soft cloth. Oh, that already looks better, doesn't it? A couple of bangs on the back of this one here. You see there and there.
Now that's interesting. This one's actually got a name inside. Um, let's see if we can see what it says. Somebody Linux. With love and best wishes, Christmas 1944. Dad. To Linux? That's what it looks like. Oh, so this is a Christmas present. Imagine getting this for a Christmas present. It's like buying someone a, a set of encyclopedias or something, isn't it? <laughs> But it's called the War Illustrated because it is predominantly photographs. But it does put them all into context. That's like a cover of, of what the magazine uh, would have looked like on the shelf. So it was uh, the December the 10th one in 1941. Look at that. And you know that is actually amazing because... As we film this today, um, my mum's 79th birthday is on December the 10th this year. So this would have been published. This was being published the day my mum was born. How amazing is that? Blimey, I better not show her it. She'd be, uh, she'd be like, oh, I'm so old. <laughs> How incredible. What's this? We have pleasure in closing your bound volume of the War Illustrated and trust you'll find it or them to your entire satisfaction. If you intend having the next volume bound by us, will you please see that any pencil marks on the covers are erased before sending the parts to us? Ah, so these were for people who bought these individually and then sent them into the publisher to get the, the issues bound up. Brilliant. There we are. That's nice, isn't it? Cool. So a couple of little little nicks on there. I don't think there's anything I can really do about that. Um, not without damaging these cloth boards, you see. That's got that's got dinged, unfortunately. But it's all right. Pop that nice volume. Number five now. So let's give this a wipe down again. I think the boxes have saved these from having a lot of a lot of damage to be honest. There we are. This one's obviously seen a bit of wear. Let's do this other box here. Well, I think these are, I'll put this back in as a rest because these have both got eight, the, the, the number eight on the front and back. So um, I'm gonna try and gently get that eight off without making too much of a obvious mark. And try and sort of blend it in slightly. Not too bad. There we are. Same on the one on the bottom here. Just sort of roughly doing it so that it blends in rather than focusing right on the uh, the swirls of the eight. That way it's much less noticeable. Although you can see there's lots of other muck on this as well, but it's only a cardboard shipping box ultimately, so if it was an old toys shipping box, you know, you might be talking, I might be going through this with a fine tooth comb, but because it's not, not exactly like that, then I don't think we need to worry too much. There we are, so this is volume eight, as stated. Oh, playing a little bit hard to get there. There we are. Got caught, I think, on one of the uh, staples, possibly. So those can stay together because they are a pair, like so. Let's 
give volume eight an initial rub down. Now this is interesting because it's actually got, I don't know if you can pick it up, there's actually a little bit of um, loss to the cover there. Just very, very minor. Not the end of the world, but it's there. And it's hard to imagine, but publications such as this really did uh, do wonders for British uh, British morale. Massive amounts of detail. I mean, absolutely incredible, really, when you think about it. This is an absolutely beautiful set. They really are in fantastic condition inside. Really something. I have been very lucky to get these. But certainly one of the uh, the dustiest things I've ever had to, <laughs> had to clean, I'll tell you that. But there we are. That's it. Uh, that volume so we're over halfway now but this is uh well it says volume 10 but we've already had volume 10 haven't we <sighs> oh dear look at this that's got some some mottle in hasn't it this is going to need a bit of work i think look at it it's all spotty on the front we can't have that <laughs> So I suppose initially then I'll just give it a wipe down with the cloth just to see what comes off initially. So certainly it's not looking great, is it, with that, um, it's like spotting or foxing, but it's not foxing. Blimey. Flew out my hand there. <laughs> right. So what do I do? See, if I do a little area down in the corner here where it's a bit nondescript, if I was to um, just put it with a rubber, potentially it's just going to, well, it's not actually doing a lot. It would have just rubbed the, the cloth boards. The only real way to get this sort of unspotted is to uh, dab a tiniest bit of water on again. So I'm just going to try it again in a little nondescript part. Yeah, see that gets it straight off. It's got just the tiniest little dabs to get this surface dust off, surface dirt. Because it's cloth, it ain't gonna help it. But it should be just enough, just enough to uh, get this looking a little bit better than it was. I'll just play it very, very carefully here. And literally just touch it 
rather than allow anything to even soak in. And this will ultimately improve it. It's making a huge difference. It's just sometimes with things like this, um, you leave it 10 minutes and then it just comes back. So, but I have been very, very minimal. It's just like taking off a tiniest little bit of layer of like surface dirt. It does look better, but for whatever reason, it was never going to sort it completely. It's definitely looking better. It's not perfect, but it's definitely made a difference. So I'm going to do a little bit more. I said, uh, restraint is the key really on this, isn't it? Less is more. And there are just little spots which are standing out. Don't think I'm going to get it any better than that, but it's definitely better than what it was by quite a long way. Let's get that. There we are. Let's have a flick through of this one, this issue. Excellent. And that was the toughest sort of repair job we've had so far, wasn't it, that one? Um, you know, the actual boards were quite, quite dirty, but I don't think we did too bad a job on that. Right then. So, so this is handwritten, in fact. And it's even got a nine pence uh, postage stamp on it. number six on the front so I'm not sure if this is for number six and on the back we'll, we'll get the uh, number carefully rubbed off so it blends in again these boxes are very sort of pulpy paper you know
Okay then. Oh, this one's got a little bit of foxing as well. Mottling as it were, but just one bit there in the middle, which uh, hopefully we'll be able to tackle without too much incident. So let's give it a, an initial wipe. Yeah, that's actually already brought a lot of that dirt up just by putting my cloth onto it. I mean, I can't really complain compared to the copies which were online, which haven't been stored in their storage boxes. These are in, uh, frankly, astonishing condition. So we're just not seeing lots of dust and dirt come off the top edges on these because they have been stored in the uh, in the boxes. It's as simple as that. So they've uh, really survived well, in fact. Awesome. Number six. Obviously, they're definitely looking the worst for wear, but that's okay. We can sort that out in due course. Let's give uh, volume two a, a clean then. Very, very dusty and dirty these. But underneath, they're all right. It's just taking off this initial layer of dust and dirt. This one's pretty nice. There is an annoying little mark on the spine there. So I'm just going to dab that with a bit of um, damp kitchen towel. Be super careful. See if that makes a difference. Mm, it's not actually a lot of uh, liquid on it. <laughs> I've been so careful with it. Oh, there we are. Okay, so it's got a little bit of it out. And if I get my little soft rubber on it. I suppose it's slightly better. Don't know what it was, some sort of uh, some sort of mark which has sort of spoiled it when it sits on the shelf a little bit. Just a little bit.
lovely. Very, very nice. Yeah, that doesn't look too bad on the spine now. Better than the uh, the big bit, the big blotch that it was on. Right, last two. So this one's got a huge number four on the front and a five on the back. So obviously these boxes have got a bit mixed up. So we get this uh, number four off first of all, if we can. It's quite deep this actually. So I'm going to need to do a bit of targeted rubbing and then try and blend it in. There we are. I'll blend it into a block. Lovely. Do the same on the bottom here, which is the number five on this one. Not so distinct that because the bottom's already quite dusty and dirty. And that's two that's two odd ones, like these were two odd ones, so if that's that should go on that one like so. These are the odd boxes that we had. as well. Marrying these ones up properly now. That should go in there because it's a, a lid and a base. There we are. Is, is actually number four is showing the most wear of any of them that we've seen to date. Now there's only one more to go through. If you have a look at it, um, a little bit of sort of wear along the front there, but a fair bit on the spine there, and that's actual wear on the cloth, and uh, we're not going to be able to do much about that. Sadly, because it's the damage has been done. It does look as if something's crept into it where it's been stored and caused it to uh, go like that. as they say each book has had a little bit of dust in the inside cover and then we're good to go as you can see fantastic right Final volume now, volume seven. This box is nice, nothing wrong with that. Well, it has got a little seven on the front, so I am gonna take that off, like so, and blend it in. Lovely. Excellent.
very nice even a nice robust box on that one it's a pleasant surprise let's give this last one the dust off quite a lot of spotting and mottling on the back but I think a lot of this will be taken off of the cloth and uh, the brush. A good one to have as the last one to work on. I think that's about as good as we're going to get that. Let's do the inside rail. Yeah, a little bit dirt along the top edge there. I'd like to get that off if I could, but it's... Uh, it's almost like it's like dust but it's like a permanent dust if you know what I mean it's actually got right into the the cloth boards you have to be so careful with this for fear of damaging them you know Right, let's look through this final volume. This is from 1943, the, the height of the Blitz. The tide was beginning to turn. That's so much great stuff in here. The fourth Churchill Roosevelt Conference. Fantastic. Amazing is all you can say about that series. Absolutely amazing. Right, let's take a look at our handiwork. And I think you'll agree they do look absolutely fantastic and gorgeous on the shelf. If you have enjoyed today's video, don't forget to hit that subscribe button and do please give the video a thumbs up. Thanks for watching today and I'll see you again very soon. Bye.